Have you ever wondered how engineers ensure the safety of skyscrapers, bridges, or any other large structure? Well, it's a complex process that involves determining the weight the structure can bear under different conditions, from the weight of the structure itself to the loads caused by using it. And that's where national standards, limit state design, and partial safety factors come in. But how do engineers apply all these factors to the design of a structure, and how do they ensure its safety under extreme conditions? In this video, we'll explore the world of load analysis, from the different types of loads to the methods engineers use to analyze them. So, buckle up and get ready to learn how engineers ensure the safety of the structures that shape our world. Building upon our understanding of load analysis, let's now explore the challenges that engineers face in determining the weight a structure can bear. There are several factors to consider, and some loads are easier to estimate than others. For instance, the weight of the structure itself is a lot easier to predict than wind loads. Engineers use past observations and a probabilistic approach to estimate the maximum possible effects of wind and snow loads on the structure during its design life. But what about loads caused by using the structure, such as the weight of people on a floor? Well, these loads can only be estimated based on the nature of its usage. For instance, a floor that's designed to support a few people at a time will have a different weight-bearing capacity than a floor meant to hold heavy machinery. And that's where national standards come in. Since there isn't enough data to use a fully statistical approach, these standards assign values to these loads. These values are based on the usage and type of structure, allowing engineers to estimate how much weight it can bear. But how do they ensure that the structure will remain safe throughout its design life? Well, that's where limit state design comes in. Engineers use characteristic values of loads that statistically have only a small probability of being exceeded during the life of the structure. This means that they consider the worst-case scenario and design the structure to withstand it. But, just to be extra safe, engineers also apply partial safety factors to these characteristic values to obtain design loads. These safety factors provide an additional margin of safety against collapse. Now, you might be wondering how these safety factors are determined. Well, different partial safety factors can be applied depending on the uncertainty or variability of a particular type of load. For example, loads caused by wind may have a different safety factor than loads caused by people walking on a floor. However, in practice, the actual partial safety factors used incorporate significant elements of the global safety factor. This means that they don't represent a rigorous probabilistic treatment of the uncertainties of the actions. In other words, engineers err on the side of caution and use safety factors that may be higher than what's strictly necessary. Moreover, when engineers design a structure, they identify the weights that need to be considered. The way these weights are applied to the design depends on how complex the analysis model is. For example, a 3D model is more complex than a 2D model and will have a more complex application of weights. For example, in a portal frame design, the wind and roof loads are applied to the main frames via secondary elements like purlins or sheeting rails, which are in turn loaded via the cladding. If the purlins or rails are included in a 3D model, the weight should be applied to these elements. If single 2D frames are modeled, equivalent point loads should be calculated at purlin positions, or an equivalent uniformly distributed load may be applied to the frame. Simplification in calculating equivalent point loads and distributed loads is recommended. For instance, in the floor slab shown, the floor beams are usually designed for a uniformly distributed load rather than the distribution shown. Similarly, multiple point loads on any member may be treated as a distributed load. Five or more equally spaced identical point loads on a member may generally be considered as a distributed load without a significant loss in the accuracy of the analysis. However, when analyzing a structure, 
engineers use computer programs that have different ways of adding loads to it. These loads can be defined in relation to the whole structure or to specific parts of it. One common way of adding loads is through joint loads. This involves applying a load to a specific joint in the structure, which will affect the surrounding members. Another way of adding loads is through joint displacements. This is where a displacement is applied to a specific joint in the structure, causing the surrounding members to move in response. Evenly distributed loads along parts of the structure is another way to add loads. This is used to simulate the weight of something like a uniform roof load or snow load across a section of the structure. However, there are situations where the distributed loads along parts of the structure may not be appropriate. For example, truss models may not allow for distributed loads because the load is instead applied to specific points. Another way to add loads is through point loads, which are loads applied to a specific point on the structure. These can be used to simulate something like a concentrated load on a column or a person standing on a specific spot of a floor. The weight of the structure itself is also a load that needs to be considered when designing a structure. The weight of the structure can be significant, so it's important to take this into account when adding loads. In addition to these loads, changes in temperature and distortions of specific parts of the structure can also be added to simulate the effects of thermal expansion and contraction or other types of deformations. It's important to note that not all of these load options may be available for certain types of structures or analyses. Nonetheless, it's important to consider all available load options when analyzing a structure to ensure accuracy and safety. Furthermore, designing a structure requires considering all the loads it will need to withstand. Luckily, computer programs can simplify this task by breaking down each load into basic parts and combining them in different ways to create load scenarios. This helps ensure the structure can handle extreme conditions while also considering everyday use. Analyzing loads is essential in designing a structure, as it ensures that the structure can handle various types of loads, such as wind or snow loads. Engineers can use computer programs to define loads for the entire structure or for specific parts of it. They can then create and analyze different load scenarios to determine how the structure will behave under various conditions, including extreme ones. This information is crucial in designing the foundation of the structure, as the loads acting on the foundation must be known in order to design it correctly. Overall, Calculating loads for a structural model may seem like a complex process, but it's crucial to ensure the safety and stability of the structure. Engineers must take into account the uncertainty of the actual loads and the fact that the modeled loads are just approximations. In cases where there are five or more evenly spaced point loads on a single member, they can be modeled as a uniformly distributed load. This simplification can make the calculation process easier and more efficient. However, it's important to use caution when applying this method and to consider other factors that may affect the load distribution. To create factored combinations of loads, engineers often use the principle of superposition. This involves entering unfactored basic load cases and then combining them with appropriate weightings to create different load scenarios. This method helps to ensure that the structure is safe under the most extreme conditions while taking into account how it might be used in everyday situations. However, in certain types of structural analyses, such as plastic, elastic plastic, or second-order analyses, the principle of superposition cannot be used. This is because the behavior of the structure under load is not linear and cannot be simply superimposed. In these cases, more advanced analysis techniques must be used to, to accurately predict the behavior of the structure. By using careful and cautious methods to calculate loads for a structural model, engineers can ensure the safety and stability of the structure, even under extreme conditions. And with the help of advanced analysis techniques, they can accurately predict the behavior of the structure and design it to withstand a wide range of loads. Thanks for watching. 
We hope you found this video informative and educational. As we've seen, designing structures to withstand various types of loads is a complex process that involves many factors. Engineers use a probabilistic approach and national standards to estimate the maximum possible effects of loads on a structure. They also use limit state design and partial safety factors to ensure the structure remains safe throughout its design life. When analyzing a structure, engineers use computer programs to add loads, including joint loads, joint displacements, evenly distributed loads, and point loads. They also consider changes in temperature and distortions of specific parts of the structure. By breaking down each load into basic parts and combining them with different weightings, engineers can ensure the structure is safe under the most extreme conditions while also taking into account how it might be used in everyday situations. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more educational content.